Hello and welcome back ladies and gentlemen to another episode of Historical Humans Reacts and in today's episode we're looking at something a little more recent for our times where 83 years ago the crypt of civilization was sealed. A time capsule that won't be opened for another 6,090 years. Yep. Why those that, numbers specifically? Oh, that's actually that's actually because uh, because the man who did it, uh, Doctor Thornwell Jacobs, uh, was studying ancient Egypt, and he was honestly appalled by how little information survived, and how so much information that we have comes from. Uh, you know, us expounding and expanding on a few key sources. Um, he really did not like the fragility of this civilization from over 6,000 years ago, having almost no surviving record of its own. Uh, a lot of the sources were Sumerian or Greek or Roman about what Egypt was like. Uh, uh, the one quoted in the article is Assyrian. Ah, uh, yes, Assyrian. Yeah, the Oh, yeah, the Assyrian tablets are basically our foundation of, oh, this is what Egypt is like. And this is one of the first modern-day time capsules, which is interesting. Yeah. A term he would yeah. then invent. Yeah. He, yeah, he invents the term because basically what he set out to do was take artifacts and information from the 1930s, from his present day, uh, seal them in a room, lock that room away, uh, and leave it for 6,000 years so that by the time the United States of America became something as far in the past as the pharaohs of Egypt, there would be a building full of records and technology and objects from that time period. He was very much wanted, uh, wanted to make sure that the cultural and technological knowledge of the world did not you know time didn't destroy it like it had for so much of egypt it should be noted though that it is very much a product of its time and that it was um everything that was um it was all jacob's choice for the objects that were included and of his prejudiced beliefs so not exactly a true snapshot of 1930s America, but they included a sort of uh, pseudo-Pharaoh's tomb, which had recordings of clarinetist Artie Shaw, movies showing photographed events from 1898 onwards, uh, 100 books on microfilm. Yeah. One of the other things included was a model of Donald Duck, but there was no gold, no jewelry, no other items of value, and they gave with it a... Uh, book of records that described the usage for every everyday item that was included. Yeah, And one of the other things that he realized was that English was not going to continue to be the predominant language uh, for the next 6,000 years. And even if it was, it would not, it would sound very different than what uh, than, you know, what would be uh, spoken in his day. So he invented what he called a language integrator, which was a device on a hand crank that would project an image with the English term for it written under it and say the name of that image in American English. So it would project an image of Donald Duck and it would go Donald Duck with the word written under it, sort of creating a, uh, a phonetic Rosetta Stone for, the, uh, for whoever finds it. Even better, he also included... Um a uh, voice on the phonograph that would say the name aloud. So it was like a speaking spell. It was like the, the barnyard kids toy that would spin around and go duck. Yeah. Bird. That, 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 yeah. That is what he effectively, he invented because it shows the image, <laughs> shows the name of the thing and then says the name of the thing in American English. Beautiful. It's a phonetic Rosetta stone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the reason he chose all the dates he did was because in 1936, which was the year he sealed the, the capsule, uh, 6,177 years had passed on the Egyptian calendar, and he wanted his, uh, his tomb to be a midway point between uh, whoever opens it and the ancient Egyptians. 
He wanted that to be okay. Kind of ego, yeah. kind of ego driven, he, where he's like, "I he, want to be he, the next Egyptian pharaoh." He, like, ask he, it. He, he's a 1930s American Egyptologist. Yeah, he he, he is of course an him. egotist. Yeah, <laughs> but it is it is a fun thought. There's a lot of poetics to it, and just the general idea of just humanity's gonna survive for another six thousand years, and when they do. I want to make sure that some part of my culture is available to them historically, archaeologically, you know, and that that part of the culture is also intact. It, it's, it, it I mean, poses a very interesting theory. And there's a book out there that I highly recommend to anyone who's interested in archaeology because it poses a lot of good thought experiments. It's called The Motel of Mysteries. And it is a children's book, or written to be a young adult's book, and it describes what an archaeologist 4,000 years in the future would think just going through a hotel room. Yeah. Yeah, and and that's, and that's the thing. Like he, the, the, pur- the purpose of this crypt uh, that Dr. Jacobs was building was to try and avoid that exact situation. Yeah, he laid out the road work with everything in it. He wanted it to be like the Pharaoh's tombs where you crack it open and there's so many valuable things. And to him, value actually, was knowledge. Yeah, that's actually one of the points that is made. There is no item of monetary value included within the tomb. Yeah, uh, There's no gold, no jewelry, no precious anything. It's all everyday objects we covered that earlier when we were talking about the yeah. items in the crypt yeah i know but i'm just going back to it again because <laughs> reiterating it yeah. tomb. there's nothing lootable in here so the loot the lootest aren't gonna get to it and the interesting thing too is it's built in the form in a former pool so they had concrete shell already there and then they just effectively filled it up and i'm assuming concreted over it or sealed it up yeah. somehow well, I think what they did is they put a concrete roof on it. I don't believe they would have filled the entire thing, with, flooded it with concrete. I don't think they would have done that. Well, yeah, I'm sure they... But I wonder it's, how they encapsulated it, because modern concrete also isn't known to last the longest, so I wonder if there's already been water intrusion. Yeah, that would be interesting. It's a question of where it is and... You know, oh, it's uh, already can... it's on uh, Oglethorpe University. It's in uh, one of yeah. their halls, Jacobs Hall. Yeah. yeah, I'm like I'm assuming it's indoors. Oh, Phoebe Hurst Hall at Oglethorpe University. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like... which was in a defunct swimming pool. Yeah, so like I'm assuming that the swimming pool is an indoor swimming pool inside a still operating building, and thus not you know vulnerable to the elements. Those old buildings break down. There's pipes that burst. Yeah. There's corrosion and erosion that happen naturally. Yeah, and I'm I'm just saying, like, I'm assuming that at the very least, you know, the rain is not a threat to this thing. <laughs> you never know. Because step one is how do we keep the wind and rain from destroying it? Step two is dealing with uh, modern, uh, uh, was it utility works? But you also have to fight too with pests. You have to fight with like. Other, like I said, water intrusion, other things that can happen. It's, I mean, the the possibilities are endless. It's the same with curation. How do yeah, you preserve but, it in in prep in perpetuity? Yeah, but at the very least, he should hopefully have internal temperature control, seeing as how it should more or less be, you know, a walled off concrete block. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. it's, you know, it should hopefully be impenetrable. <laughs> But it's very fun. It's a very fun idea. Um, it seems kind of silly, too, just on the grounds of the fact that, like, you know, look at how outdated and outmoded uh, this looks to us just a hundred years later. Like, this, you know, someone seems just like, you know, this, it, you know, his whole statement is like, these are the Americans. This is the American things. And it's like, we all live and go, that ain't us. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be interesting, though. <laughs> When we're it's been all less than 50 years, and we're looking at go like that ain't us. <laughs> I just I hope when we are cyborgs, six thousand years in the future, and we go crack open this crypt, we're able to look back fondly. Yeah, well, tie yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think that's a great point for us to wrap up here. Thank you guys for watching. 
and we'll see you in the next video.